When was the last time you thought about the investments that you have in your 401k or IRA account? When was the last time you performed an analysis of the performance of these investments? How certain are you that you're getting the best reward based on how much risk you're taking? Today, I'm going to share with you two great long-term passive portfolio strategies that were created by two legitimate legends of the financial world that you can implement in pretty much any retirement account that you have access to. You can't build a hotel on Baltic. The houses are people's homes. I own those houses. It's called a monopoly. I knew someday it'd be you and me in jail together. Not me, old friend. I'm just visiting. <laughs> you backstabbing bastard! I came here with nothing. Then I landed on free parking and won the pot. That's not a real rule. It's how I play! If you've been following our portfolio analysis series, then you know that we're slowly working our way up the risk spectrum. We kicked off the season by looking at highly stable medium risk portfolios that are best suited for near-term goals. Then we evaluated portfolios that perform especially well during market crashes. In our last episode, we increased the risk and the timeline to the 10-year range and looked at two great portfolios for intermediate-term goals. Today, I want to start investigating long-term portfolios. These are the highest risk to reward portfolios, so they're best suited for the 20-year or longer time frame. That's why we recommend these strategies be used for retirement savings accounts. Today's two portfolios are Jack Bogle's 3-Fund Portfolio and Rick Ferry's Core 4 Portfolio. First up, we've got Jack Bogle's 3-Fund Portfolio. Jack Bogle hit upon this brilliant idea in the 1970s that instead of having to pay extremely excessive fees to invest in a mutual fund and then hope that the manager wouldn't lose all your money, what if you could instead just buy the market itself? What if there was a mutual fund that didn't pick stocks at all? Instead, this fund would own the entire stock market by holding shares in every company in the index. As long as the mutual fund was market cap weighted, there would be very little turnover and thus very few trading fees. So he took this great idea and he started a company that he called the Vanguard Group. And he launched the world's first index mutual fund called the Vanguard 500, ticker symbol VFIAX. This idea of passive index investing was such a visionary idea that an entire community of followers sprung up online. The group called themselves the Bogleheads, and they spent their time preaching Bogle's low-fee, highly diversified, hands-off, passive investing approach. The classic Boglehead three-fund portfolio is made up of 50% U.S. stock market, 30% international stock market, and 20% aggregate U.S. bond index. If you're enrolled in a retirement account that gives you access to a total world market index, such as Vanguard's Total World Stock Market Index, ticker symbol VT, you could actually use that instead of these separate U.S. and international funds, which would make this a more traditional 80-20 portfolio. Next up, we have Rick Ferry's Core 4 portfolio. Rick Ferry is a prolific author and an advocate for modern portfolio theory. He's also a boglehead, so these portfolios aren't really in com competition with one another, since really... Rick Ferry's portfolio is just more or less a slight tweak on the classic three-fund portfolio. The core four is made up of 48% U.S. total stock market, 24% international large-cap stock index, 8% U.S. real estate index, and 20% U.S. aggregate bond index. To analyze the performance of these portfolios, we're going to set this up a little differently than we have in the past. Retirement savers are always going to dollar cost average into their holdings, so we don't want to run a simulation for a lump sum investment. We're going to set the initial investment to $10,000 and assume our investor is going to contribute $500 per month every month for 20 years. The investor is going to rebalance the portfolio on the first trading day of each year. We're going to use the mutual fund versions of these positions since most of these ETFs didn't exist 20 years ago. 
We're going to run this simulation from January 2001 through August of 2020. When you're considering long-term portfolios, you need at least two decades to consider. In our case, the decade from 1999 to 2009 was one of the worst decades in U.S. stock market history, and the decade from 2009 to 2019 is one of the best decades in U.S. stock market history. So we should get a reasonable middle ground when we average everything together. Looking at the returns, we can see that these portfolios are basically identical in terms of performance. For this analysis, we need to use the money weighted return because this accounts for our $120,000 cost basis, which is that $500 that we contributed every month for 20 years. We can see that our return is in the 9% range, which is a pretty great long-term result. The worst year, max drawdown, and standard deviation are painful, but that's why this is a long-term portfolio. Huge swings up and down are standard operating procedure for very high-risk portfolios like these. So how did these portfolios stack up against just buying the S&P 500 index? In this test case, I have to say that the simple path to wealth strategy, which is just buying the index, was actually the better strategy. You took on more risk, and you suffered worse drawdowns, but you also got an over 10% average annual return, and you ended up with a lot more money overall. Now, in fairness, during the lost decade, the simple path lost badly to the three fund and the core four, but then again, this is a long-term portfolio, and the simple path does tend to do very well in multi-decade scenarios. So let's assume that you'd like to implement one of these strategies in your retirement account. How do you go about doing that? Under most employer-sponsored retirement plans, you should be able to replicate one of these two strategies. Here we can see my employer's 401k fund options. I have no access to real estate, so I've implemented the three fund portfolio strategy. For the U.S. stocks, we want either a total U.S. stock market index or an S&P 500 index fund. I'm using the Vanguard Institutional Index Fund, which is an S&P 500 index. For the international stocks, you want a foreign large cap index such as this Vanguard Developed Markets Index. The bond offerings here are not great. And as you know, I prefer long-term treasuries for my personal portfolios, but there are none available from these funds. So I've settled on this broad total bond market index, which is actually a fund managed by my current employer. I'm guessing my employer doesn't want its employees investing in competitor bond funds, so they only give us access to the bond funds that they manage. My wife, on the other hand, has access to a proper aggregate U.S. bond index, as well as an S&P 500 index, an international fund, and even a global real estate index in her 403B. She's using the core four strategy in her 403B currently, but I have noticed that the global real estate fund is not nearly as good as a proper U.S. real estate index. So what have we learned here today? Well, we learned that it's actually quite easy to construct a balanced long-term portfolio within most employer-sponsored retirement accounts. Sadly, there are plans out there that only offer target date funds or high-fee mutual funds. And for those investors, I recommend this. If your employer gives you a matching contribution, then participate only up to the match percentage and then put the rest of your money into a Roth IRA or just save your money in a taxable account if you have no other option. But just remember this. This portfolio is a long-term project, so contribute each month and then leave it alone. Before I get going, I'd like to recommend a channel from my friend Alex Peroff. He does videos about behavioral finance, investing, and philosophy, and I personally think his stuff is really insightful and interesting. I left a link to his channel in the video description. If you get a chance, please head over there and check his stuff out.